people who have gone from employee to employer scaled and found critical mass. Is it always the wife so, as a real estate agent? When you work at a small company that makes a ton of money, you get like the inside track on how everything is done. It depends on what, what you're trying to do, right? Like what, what's the goal? What are you? Are you mortgage? Are you real estate? What I try to do is help them understand reality, which is we're trying to bring value. I'm trying to help you live a better quality of life. I'm trying to give you a bigger, nicer home with a better view. Now, all I do is a weekly email on the same day of the week forever for my entire database. This is a good point about stories too, because a lot of people think they can manipulate to having a larger emotion share. You think everybody sees your stuff? Nobody sees your stuff. What Josh is trying to say, which is like, can you succeed without the coach? And so now the new leads I got year one become warm leads, but now I added new leads on top of that. So now I grew. Aspirational sense that I want to be this. I want to do this. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for Ricky Karu. added one additional person to the mix, Mr. Albert Preciato, a man who needs no introductions, but we'll give him one anyway, host of Million Dollar Coaching, 5K Mastermind, Driven Event, which is a national event in 2024, 2025 rather, is gonna be in 13 cities across America. Um, a dear friend of mine. And then to Albert's left, uh, of course, we're doing a second episode with Ricky Carruth. Um, which is just an amazing, amazing real estate professional, uh, a coach, a mentor to many, and it sounds like a budding star in the EXP Realty world. So appreciate you guys being here. Yeah, man. Thanks Absolutely. For, thanks for doing this again. And I yeah. think Albert should have Ricky on the driven stage. Should we negotiate that out? We should, I we think, should broker I think that it out? Just, I, listen, I don't think there's a speaking fee. I think he does it for him, and then it's vice versa. That's how – isn't that how all your buddies do it, Patrick, Bet David, and – Grant Cardone and well, they, they're they're expensive. They're oh, very yeah. expensive. So they <laughs> charge you. Well, the thing is that Patrick, I hired him as a mentor. Okay. Like ten years ago. Okay, so now he does it for free. So he 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 won't do it for free, but he'll do it like for a lot less for me. I heard Ryan Pineda is free as long as you pay for his golf. <laughs> He's got, a, he's got something know. on his website I, and it I, says golf with me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't yeah. know. Uh, Ryan Pineda's. Uh, well, come with me in two details. weeks. We're going to we're going to have lunch with uh, Bradley. And what we can do is we'll um, we'll stop by Ryan yeah. Pineda's office and um, <laughs> we'll bring we'll bring what he called Nerf guns. And uh, we'll, we'll we'll see if he uh, wants to golf with us for free. But I think the reason why I wanted to have everyone here um, specifically is because you are, at least in my opinion, Mr. Beverly Hills. You have another nickname for yourself, which is the Mexican the, George the Mex Clooney. Oh, no, no, no. The, <laughs> well, that, that's a different one. The, the Mexican Prince of Bel-Air. Yeah. <laughs> in West Philadelphia. Ooh. Border. Nobody's going to know what that is. We're so old. Yeah, so mm. old. On a previous episode. I almost sung that on stage yesterday. I Should've. think people would have loved it because I think agents probably will identify. Because I, I was like, how many of you guys are from L.A., born and raised? Yeah. Right? And I was like... You know, I don't, I don't know a lot of people know this, but we got that in common. Like, I'm from L.A. too. What? Yeah. So, like, I, I, I went through this whole thing and talked. I was going to, like, sing the song a yeah. little bit. <laughs> and I was like, you guys don't believe me? Yeah. Right? I was like, I got a picture. Boom. And, and the next slide was a picture of where I'm from, right? Lower Alabama. <laughs> oh, dude. Okay. So, gotcha. Alabama meets Beverly Hills. <laughs> yeah. Here we Beverly, are. Beverly Hill Billy, which is Ricky. There you go. <laughs> Meet Beverly Hills. Absolutely. Let's go. The worlds yeah, collide. The worlds collide. So this is a guy, and I, I can't think this wait. Is, I think this is super funny. We're only we're only going to roll for a few minutes, but um, I'm Jewish, which means I don't like to spend money. I hate being wasteful, um, and I've built a career. Ricky was asking me like, so that's a thing. That's like that's that's a deal. That, <laughs> yeah. No, that's real. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we're not cheap. But there's a reason why there's truth to every. What would you call that? Stereotype. stereotype. Yeah, thanks. Dynamite drop in. Truth to every stereotype. So I, I we haven't spoken, but um, I founded Cardiff, which is the nation's largest privately held commercial finance company. So in my 20 years, um, our company has funded eight billion dollars worth of business loans. Mm -hmm. Large company, but I'm no longer involved in the day to day of the business. 
um, and I have a podcast. And so this is kind of like therapy for me, but it's also philanthropy because mm. the mission of the Stern Talk is to meet people who have gone from employee to employer, scaled and found critical mass. And that's really the interest that I have. I wanna go all around the nation, not necessarily the world because I don't like long flights. Um, very Larry <laughs> David-ish, if you, if you watch Curb Your Enthusiasm. We all turn into the same curmudgeon when we get older, Jews. I don't even mm. like flying to Hawaii. You yeah. were telling me, you flew with, to uh, Maui Brad, yeah, Bradley? with Brad Lee yeah. last year yeah. on a private jet. Eh, I'll fly United. I'll fly United. But it's cool when you have uh, friends like that. Yeah. Because it's not that expensive. Yeah. Because you split it. Sure. Because like, he's taking his family. I'm 60 taking my family. 60 grand a piece. And, and it's not that bad. Have you been on the private jet, Ricky? I haven't. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. you have? Damn. Yeah, once, once or twice, yeah. But don't you just like the safety? Not of the 737 MAX. <laughs> it's not really a safe, safe plane. Um, especially if you're sitting in. I don't know. I mean, like, if you have two pilots, I mean, I think the stats are like, it's safer than driving. Yeah. No, I'm actually, <laughs> what I'm talking about is uh, private jet, like a G550 or whatever it's called, yeah. versus a Boeing 747. I'd rather be on a 747. Wouldn't you? You just feel like, you just, safer. because of the size, you just feel like if it crashes, there's a lot of. Dude, 400 <laughs> people are going to die, but yet, you know what I mean? But like, a lot of small planes. Correct. Yeah, but not uh, the Gulf Stream is not like that small. Yeah, it's, it's well in any event, yeah. not another time, another place. But it, again, Beverly Hills meets Beverly Hillbillies. But both are real estate gurus. Mm. Both are real estate gurus. Both have been in real estate. Sounds like for the last twenty years, and both have built scale. Right. Well, well, me, I was a mortgage uh, guy. Okay. And mm -hmm. and my wife, she was a real estate agent. Is it always the wife so, as a real estate agent? Yeah. So so she wanted to start a real estate brokerage. So that's when we started uh, our real estate brokerage, Ambiance Realty. Okay. And, okay. and then from there on, we started getting more agents and then we started growing and yeah. then we opened the escrow company. So, but I was never really a realtor. Like I, I didn't like real estate because I didn't like open houses and carrying signs. And mm -hmm. I was more of a numbers, Who does? numbers game, not, not numbers guy. So I, I liked working with realtors to provide them mortgages, but I didn't uh -huh. like the real estate um, mm -hmm. activities. Yeah. My wife did. Really? As a man, I feel like the transactional approach to real estate would irk me and would get on my nerves and I'd run out of patience. You could do open houses, cold calling. Uh, I don't think so. Yeah, I don't, don't think so. No, you know, no. I built, I don't wanna say I, but we built Cardiff, right, in 2004. I worked for Fisher Investments which I don't know if you know who Fisher Investments is, but one of the largest high net worth private client asset managers in the world. Um, they manage like half a trillion dollars and it's owned by one guy. So I worked in the Bay Area for him, right? Did very well. But when you work at a small company that makes a ton of money, you get like the inside track on how everything is done. Does that make sense? And it's sort of a breeding ground for entrepreneurs. He was a big junk mailer. And I know in the real estate game. Junk mailer meaning. Sent direct out. mail. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're in the if you're in a business that's well, sales this was when, nineties, dude. I, do I look at that fucking old? He just said the nineties. I mean, direct mail, right? Was this, <laughs> yeah. I mean, early two thousands. Yeah. I mean, yeah, early two yeah, thousands I mean, like, is when I worked there. Because I mean, social media hit mid two thousands, you know, and it really wasn't didn't really. iPhone was 08, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, you know, yeah. I'm just well, that's where I got my background, right? And this is not about me, but I'm just saying like. Sales, if you own a sales and marketing firm, direct mail, but insiders would call it junk mail, right? Um, third class postage, right? Um, is a big component, right, of the sales strategy. Mm -hmm. Is it still today? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. just have to be super strategic. Okay. Like, I don't think like, Albert said, you're sending out mailers? No. 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 He's on social media. My, with my, mine is like almost all social media. Right. Yeah. And mm -hmm. is it similar for you, Ricky? Because the, the idea is double dragons. We're going head to head. It depends on what, what you're trying to do, right? Like what, what's the goal? What are you? Are you mortgage? Are you real estate? You know, what, what role are you playing? And what well, how are you about trying you specific to your example? Of what? Like Being you, for an agent? No, I mean, you know. For, like, like me, I'm on social. Yeah. Like I just do social, like for my businesses. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But, but like when I'm talking to agents, like agents are scared to cold call. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, you can do a handwritten letter, handwrite the envelope, handwrite the return address, right? They are going to open that and you've got their attention and that will make the phone ring. Um, but you're going to get, you know, 
two tenths of one percent as a response. No, rate. we have a good five to ten percent callback rate. Yeah, that's pretty so good. So I'm sending out I'm sending out a hundred letters. I'm going to get five to ten people. today. And how do I do that? Well, um, say I have a 20, I could do this with anything, luxury, anything, commercial, whatever it is. I'm going to, I'm going to look at the listing and I'm going to pull up all the owners that own a lesser home around it. Right. Right. I love it's a strategy. five bedroom, yeah. right. I'm calling all the three and four saying, Hey, I see you've got a three. Do you need a four bed? Do you need a five bedroom? Mm -hmm. I've got a really nice one. I'd love to show you. Now I'm not calling to take something. The perception is, is agents, think that they're calling to convince somebody to do something. Mm -hmm. And that's why they're scared to make calls because they're programmed and brainwashed with the 1980s yeah. scripts that are still around. When what I, what I try to do is help them understand reality, which is we're trying to bring value. I'm trying to help you live a better quality of life. I'm trying to give you a bigger, nicer home with a better view. Are, right. you, are you thinking about doing that? And now these are the most prime prospects because they're gonna buy that and they're gonna sell this. Now I just did two deals with one one motion. Yeah, because you sound like you want to help them. That doesn't um, sound like it. It's what I'm yeah. it's what I'm doing. You know, I'm not trying to sound like it. I am trying to help but them the, live. The old scripts are more like, do you want to sell? Do you mm -hmm. want to sell? Not mm -hmm. how can I help you? Exactly. So I built my entire business on just calling property owners and saying, a house sold in your area, call to see if there's something I could do to help. Now in 2014, 15, 16, that worked great. Right. Because everybody's thinking about moving and their their mortgage rates were the same as when they bought their house. Right. Now everybody's sitting on four percent mortgage rates. Nobody wants to sell. They even if they wanted to, they really can't because mortgage rates are seven and they're sitting on four. So that that whole what can I do to help you thing doesn't work like it did when I was coming up. You've got to call with intentions now. Right. Situations and urgency around either I've got a buyer for your place and actually have one, or I have a really nice house if you're thinking about upgrading, or I have this really great investment property that's cash flowing, you've got to call with something that you're offering. Some value. Of value yeah. now. Um, now. Now, Ricky, uh, so you are the one getting the business. Do you have a team? You have a large I don't team? Do, I don't, I'm out of production. I did it for 20 years. So I was the number one team. Uh, I was the number one Remax agent in Alabama for a long time. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was number one in my MLS for a long time, just single agent, no team. Yeah. I was the listing agent, buyer agent, everything. Um, and then when I stepped out, my dad handles the day to day and it's just him and the assistant. He just does the day to day. There's not a whole lot of business there. Right. Right. But I, I'm, I do way better coaching, speaking, writing, you know, producing content. And you have a lot, like you have a large downline there with the XP? I do. I do. I'm at 850 Damn. some odd agents. How, how much does that more or less like bring in a month? Like 50, 60 K 50, 60 K. Yeah. And that's for, passive, right? Totally passive. No expenses, no liability, no nothing. And I can take it to 5,000, 10,000 agents. It doesn't. I mean, the more speaking well, gigs, you it doesn't do, break. Right? Well, I don't, I don't promote Social. it. I don't talk about EXP on social. I don't do anything to build EXP. Interesting. All, everything is focused around Ricky and building mm -hmm. my personal brand, right? And, and the coaching business. How long right? did it take you to get to 800 agents? Well, I got to 1,000 actually by about two years. So it was about two years I got to 1,000. And then when the market shifted, you know, I got my ass kicked. Yeah. And it went down to about eight, uh, about seven, six, 70 or so. And now I'm back on the upswing. I'm back up to about 850. Yeah. But so you, don't, it, you don't change your lifestyle based on that cash flow, do you? No, absolutely not. No. I don't change my, I haven't changed my life. I mean, you could give me $10 like million. Dollars. My, my lifestyle wouldn't change at you, all. You, yeah. you probably make way more money coaching than speaking though, right? Yeah, I do. But it all, it all plays together. Yeah. Right. It all plays together and all, it all plays a part and all boats are rowing in, in the same direction mm -hmm. now. Yeah. I was a free coach, totally free for seven years. It's a good story. Yeah. Uh, when I got in, I was like, I'm going to charge. But then I realized agents, the yeah. ones that are struggling. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. They, and so I was like, well, let me go free and actually build a brand. Yeah, yeah. And then I'll build some businesses around that. Did it for seven years. In December, I finally switched to paid. 
and it's blown up. I mean, I switched to just free to 100 bucks a month, yeah. and I already have 600 agents in just two months doing that. Yeah, and it's just two months in. Um, I've just built such a big and, brand. And these 800 agents, just to keep it simple, how many of those agents close? Is it you close a deal a month? Let's say. Do you think it's two hundred ish? Yeah, two two hundred ish. Yeah, depending on the month, two hundred. Yeah, and then the, yeah. obviously it it's like sometimes it's higher than 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 other months. Like they cl they'll close more, you'll make more, or is that the average? Yeah, no, no. It, it actually goes because like I've got agents all over the country and in other countries, and so it actually kind of it's it's pretty correlated to the national seasonality of it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, pending deals start picking up mid January every year nationally. Right, yeah. And then closing start picking up mid February because of the pendings close. And it and so it it it, it kind of dips, ebbs and flows with those national numbers. You know, every market's local and ha is different from the national, you know, data, but um but because I have agents all over the country, other countries and stuff, it's very correlated. So like you know, December, January, February are kind of lower months than right. March, April, May, June. So you get more, you, you probably make more from the bigger states because they have bigger bigger deals? Never really broke it down to, yeah. to states. And But the thing is, is you're capped. You make like, if they if they cap, which is 80,000 gross, they've paid the company 16, you don't make any more off them until the next year when the cap resets. You make money, you make out of that 16. So you don't make money on every deal. You make money until they get through so capping. So you're capped too, basically. What? Your income is capped off of their cap. No, because I can bring on as many agents as I want. Yeah, yeah. So, right. this, the, so the, yes, yes, it's capped on it's them capped for the per, year per that yeah. agent. But has to yeah. keep, so, yeah. so, keeps, so you have to you, keep bringing in new agents so that you always never run out of the cap. Well, can you make money on their downline? Yes. No, not that's interesting. Yes. See, that's the thing. I've brought, I've brought in 122. It's yeah. turned into 850. I like. That. Oh, okay. I like. Right. This. Uh, the yeah. others brought more. Well, and I helped them. Right, I help them bring them in. But right. you, make, you make less on the ones they bring in? No, I make more on the ones that the ones I bring in bring in. Then oh. I start making a little S the next couple levels. I yeah. make the most on the oh, yeah. bottom, which is the seventh. So, you know, seven level, that's a lot. I mean, that, but I mean, after like the second or third level, you don't even know who they are. The, like when you pull up my thing, my back office, there's deals. I have no idea who the agents are. Yeah. Do you have, do you have their I'm, contact info? Yeah, I have it all right there. Can you use, can you leverage that info? to send them a cold email saying like, I'm Ricky. Who? They already know the who The one at the is. bottom. The level. agent? Well, the ones that you've never met before. Like I send them emails constantly. I send my entire organization emails about my coaching calls. There and we go. The other. Okay, yeah. good. I mean, all right. Yeah. Like, yeah, like I do all do, that. Do you have your 800 people on your under your coaching also? You, you coach them? Yeah, that's yeah like every, yeah, everybody that's in my organization has access to me 24 seven. Is that, fr is that free? It's free. The free. Yeah, free. That's so, the benefit. So it, re it, really, it really played into what I was doing because I was coaching for free. And then when I was, I was like, I'm going to do my own brokerage. But I was like, wait a minute, I can still have a brick and mortar, bring on agents locally just like I would, but I don't have liability of them. And now I can expand anywhere I want to for free all over the world. And I'm going to have equity. Okay, sign me up for this. And so it played well because I was already coaching agents for free, so I was already in that mode. Mm -hmm. So now I can even use this to extend the free coaching even more on more of a one-on-one -on -one basis versus before it was more of a group. Right. Group one on one, it was more group coaching. With this, I can actually coach them one on one for free, which I still do, even though I'm charging for coaching, you know, to the general public of agents. You know, when they when they join the brokerage, it's free, right? Yeah. And they get one on one, which nobody gets one on one. Yeah. Like I don't even do one on one. Like you can't even pay me to do one on one. Yeah. I'm not gonna do one on ones until I'm like it's a hundred thousand for a session. Right. Which I'm not there I yet. I tried to tell I, I I tried to tell you last week and he was like, Nah, I don't know and then luckily What's you were up? here about exp how it worked but you broke it down for him pretty well listen it's a polarizing subject right because the agents that are out there they're part of the company that throw up exp on people you know like oh you got to join got to look at this and whatever and and the people kind of get irked by it yeah or whatever and so there's this polar it's polarizing like you either love it right because you realize what it is or you hate it because either you're a brokerage owner and you're losing agents to them or you're an agent who's been approached a million times and it, it just seems sleazy or whatever. What's the real quick? I don't want to interrupt, but help me to understand because we didn't talk about this compass, right? Which yep. was, it, you know, backed by SoftBank. Yeah. What's the difference between compass? Which they don't have they don't like you can't like build an organization there unless it's like a traditional team. OK, so it's like a Remax. Yeah, exactly. Okay, got it. Got it's it. a traditional because it was hot for a moment in my area, specifically yeah. in Southern California. Compass was taking over. They yeah. were buying agents. Yeah. yeah. They were yeah. paying for them. Yeah. That's so interesting. I mean, it was, 
you would see a deluge of direct mail, right? Yeah. That stuff's expensive, right? They were going in the hole to try to build their brand and build their company. And now it's like, how are they gonna dig out of it? But I don't know that they actually built the company to be a profitable company or just right. something to drive investors to invest in, to raise money. Yeah. You know, I, I, Is Compass publicly traded? Mm -hmm. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah, it is. Oh, okay. Well, what about that other company, Real? Have you heard about them? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, and all the, about are them. They, are they very, They. it seems like there's, they copied EXP and Copycat made it a little company, bit sweeter. Uh, do what? And, and made it a little bit sweeter, like by a Tried little bit. Tried to, but but yeah. they but they really screwed it up. It's um, they so never hit you up like, hey Ricky, come join us. No, no, no. Yeah, but they 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 have, and I mean other agents, and you know they'll offer these big um, stock incentives and stuff. But like, they're public the, as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So these are I'm, like small cap stocks I've never heard of. Right. These are like. A billion definitely, dollar. Definitely real. It's the new We're, thing. Look. I mean, EXP's on the S and P six hundred, small cap six hundred. Yeah. Six hundred. Yeah. So like uh real, yeah, they they copied them. So they basically said, Hey, we'll, we're gonna go in here and do an, a lower cap. Yeah, sixteen to the XP, we'll do twelve here. Um and so they're like, Oh, that'll be more attractive for agents. You know, right. It's a lower cap, they're gonna save four thousand a year. But the rev share that you pay the agents that built the organizations comes out of the cap. So when Can you, you explain that to me? So like when I go out and bring agents into into the company, yeah. okay, I'm making a cut off of their cap, right? Out of the sixteen thousand, right? Right. So I make a piece of that, uh -huh. right? So if you lower the cap, what does that lower? I see. It the makes your downline lower as well. Yeah, I, I make a lot less Revenue. off my downline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Understood. So so with it's twenty five percent less. Or something so with the like XP, that. it's seven levels deep. Right with real, it's five levels. So you lose two levels. Now those bottom levels eventually will be your largest two by 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 far. Mm -hmm. Right, we're talking about hundreds of thousands a month that you're losing not having those two if you build a massive organization. But even on the five, you make a lot less on those five. Mm -hmm. Right, the way that they have it set up. Um, there's a lot of differences in the. They, they made it to where you can have two sponsors. Like I if, like that. like well, because I'd the, like to I'd like to go to an event. Hear Ricky speak and be like, "Fuck, I want it. that guy." Yeah, I, yeah. I fuck, I want that guy. We well, have to do it in the beginning. You can't choose it later. No, like, that's it, what I'm saying. That's no, that, why, that's yeah. fine. But but for the sponsor, it's like now I'm getting half. Mm. So when you're building your organization, yeah. it kind of dilutes it, right? So it's not good. It's, it's good. For, it's, it might be good for you. Yeah. But it's not good for me as the the as running the organization, yeah. right? Yeah. So so it was already diluted from the cap being lower. Now you're diluting it even more by giving agents an option to choose. To can, just give me half. I can see it from both sides. Right? Yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah. we could go on and on and on about well, cause, it. And, and, then, and then the cap resets, right? Every 12 months? Every year, yeah. Yeah. Because how many, what's the percentage of the realtors that actually hit the cap? Because to, to hit 16,000. 16, you have to have 80,000 euros. Have, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And, yeah. And, Is that and, hard? And, In California, well, you average, sell one home. The average realtor makes how much? Like You're 50, asking me? 50K. $300,000 yeah. a year, maybe? No. 50K. Nationally, the average is like 50k, 52k. I would, so I would I, kill myself. I think in certain states, like it's up to like <laughs> nine, I think 90,000 is the biggest state. Yeah. Like average agent makes is like 90k. Yeah. Uh, should go back to so, be, so go back to being a cocktail. So 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 the top producers are going to hit the cap, but like most agents will won't hit the cap. Yeah. But I mean, I mean, I mean, like li, li, here's the thing with brokerages and owning these nationwide brokers and stuff. You can't just go get. You can't have like this massive company with thousands, you know, tens of thousands of agents. With no money either. And and have just top producers. Yeah. Like your model has to fit around being profitable around mm -hmm. the average of, of the agents, right? You, yeah. you know what I mean? It's just like, um, you know, when you figure out what you're going to make per agent in your organization, like it's got to be an average of the highest producers and the non-producers all figured in there, right? And now you're working on the averages of law numbers versus, oh, I'm just gonna build a team of 100 agents who are all do 200,000 a year. Does anyone ever try to like build an organization just like, I'm only gonna let you in my organization if you're a super agent? They don't have to because it doesn't cost them a dime to bring anybody into their organization. There's zero expenses. So what does it matter? We're gonna bring them in and we're gonna try to help them become a superstar. Yeah. Now, 90% of agents fail. You know, why is that? Well, because not everybody has what it takes to actually go out there and do it. I can't make them do it. Yeah. I can't do it for them. Yeah. I can give them the blueprint. I can tell, dude, I can tell them exactly how to go make a million bucks a year because I did it. And I've helped a lot of agents do it. I can show them how to do it just, and it's real simple. I could explain it in five minutes. I want to hear. I mean, it, it, we've already talked about it. 
Well, right. We got Albert now, but yeah. I mean, the the the, the whole the whole premise is this, right? The whole the whole thing is is talking to people in the market, right, about what they want to do, why they want to do it, and helping them do it, right? Yeah. Now they don't want to do anything. Okay, great, right? I'd love to work with you later when you do. Is that okay to stay in touch? Cool. What's a good email? Now all I do is a weekly email on the same day of the week forever for my entire database. What day do you send that out? Wednesday. Why Wednesday? No reason. It doesn't matter what day you do it, right? Now we're getting into the stuff that, see, and this is what agents do. They start like they trying to like yeah. dissect everything yeah. Yeah. that yeah. doesn't matter. I, I, I like Wednesday though, because it's not the beginning and it's not the end. I, I, I don't know why I picked right, Wednesday, but it's like um, in the, in the beginning of the week, Saturday. they're like, they're like coming mm -hmm. home for, they're coming back from the from weekend, the weekend yeah. trying to get their thing going. At the end of the week, they're like excited yep, about the exactly. weekend. Like in the middle, it seems like that so, would be a good so day. So that's why we, like we have our trainings here Wednesdays. Because mm -hmm. Monday is people are getting, Slow better from the weekend. Slow to move. Some yeah. of them are hungover. Yeah. And then Wednesday, it's like the middle point. You looked at me when you said hungover. <laughs> I don't even Basically, the, the premise of it is, is when, when you're a new agent, yeah. year one, your whole business is the lead you met that day, that year. Because you don't have any past stuff going on. This is your first year. Sure. You do the weekly email. Now those new leads from year one become warm leads year two. They remember who you are. Now, what 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 is... What would you say is is the the best way to stay relevant with people in your database? They have to see you like constantly. How though? What what's the platform? How do you what action does an agent take to make sure that they stay relevant with everyone they ever talk to forever? Nice Social media. I'm asking the yeah. Beverly well, Hills. Well, no. what what I have my agents do go. is is they go live. They go live okay. on under social media, and they do it. I'm gonna so, I'm some, gonna change your so, life, bro. So, Are you ready five, for this? Five times a week. Let's now I'm gonna, I'm gonna change your life. Like I'm interested. social media, mm -hmm. what's the organic reach on social media? Well, you're limited by impressions. No, no, sure. no. I'm, I'm just wondering, like, what is the organic reach of social media? Like the the, it, the amount of your followers it. that's let's oh, just yeah, say yeah, Instagram, like, like whatever. One percent, two percent. One percent, two percent. Now, social media, can you take the people that you've talked to, put them into CRM? This no, no. You we're talking about social media. Mm -hmm. You say you go live, and that's how you make sure you're relevant with everyone. When you, when you do 1% of people see yeah. it. So can you put your database in social media and ensure that every single one of those people see you and you stay relevant with them forever on social media? How the fuck do you do that? Can't. That's what he's, that's his point. You email, can't. Email you. Listen, can. they, if social media has a 1% organic reach, let's say it's 5 or 10, yeah. right? Email has 90. 90% 90 of the people in your database. So so when, when people come into your social media ecosystem, yeah. right? Yeah. And you guys, you guys know this because you do it. You'll follow someone because you like their stuff, yeah. right? Because you like the video they did. So, so you'll you'll see you'll see them for like a week or two, but you didn't really engage with their with their content. So then what happens? You stop seeing their content. If somebody's not engaging with the content, there's, the it. feed's only this big. I, I totally so get it. So the yeah. algorithm's going to show you what you do engage with. So now you've slowly forgotten about this person that you followed three weeks before. This is a good point about stories, too, because a lot of people think they can manipulate to having a larger impression share by posting to stories often. Here's and the trap that agents run into, and really all business people. They think that social media is the place where they stay relevant forever to people. Mm -hmm. There's a core group of your followers that engage with you that do see your stuff probably forever, right? But then there's this, there's this, there's this bigger group of your following that doesn't see your stuff, and you don't even know it. You're posting. You think everybody sees your stuff. Nobody sees your stuff. Yeah. And so the whole point is, is when they somebody follows stuff. you, yeah. you got to get their data right then, mm -hmm. their email. Yeah. Right. And you got to do this weekly email because now when you get that, now you own see emails. When you go on your phone and look at social media, what's the what's the physical motion that you do? Swipe. Yeah. Right. When you check your email on your phone, what's the physical motion that you do? Same thing. So what is it? It's the same thing. Mm -hmm. Email is social media. You're looking through a feed to see if something stands out to engage oh, with. Yeah. It's the same thing. The only difference is, is you own it. Mm -hmm. And now 90% of those people are going to see you every Wednesday, no matter if they engage or not. What email automation software do you use? I don't use automation. What? No, I write the emails. I told you that oh, on no, last no, no. podcast. Oh, no, automation. How do you, yeah, how do you send it out? Because Attentive, Clavio. Because one, one, one thing that helps really well automation? Is, is you create like a free, I don't know if, you, if you've done this, but you create a free. <laughs> I'm a, so confused. You create a free webinar. <laughs> a free webinar for yeah. like coaching real estate and then you have and you run an ad for that and then you collect their emails or cell phones or names right. and then what i what i add is what is the top line revenue because then 
then if somebody makes ten thousand dollars, they're probably not going to buy a house. They're not going to. I could care less what somebody. I'm putting every single person I've ever communicated with in this yeah. database to get my stuff, and, and and I still do that. Yeah. But but when you have the top line revenue, now you know who actually is a qualified buyer, and obviously the other people can probably give you a referral. But we collect all those leads, the emails, the cell phones. They go into go high level, mm -hmm. and then they and then right there is you, you trap them. Then you could email blast, text blast. Don't use that word. I, trap. I, <laughs> oh. I, <laughs> And how often do you send emails out? Every day. Oh, wow. That's good. Every so I, day to your whole database? Yeah. What is it? What is okay. that? So, 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 so sometimes, sometimes like, like two times or three times a day. So this is, th these are potential clients that could buy or sell? Or coaching properties. clients or? Yes, but the thing is that they, they're not only, we're not only looking for coaching for real estate or for mortgage, but we have escrow. And we have, So there's different products. So And the it, driven it, event. It, yeah, the driven event. It depends on the email campaign or whatever yeah. whatever the campaign is. But yeah, but, uh, yeah there's there, there's just a lot of uh, products that we offer. It sounds yeah, like well, there's congruency well, between well, what you guys well, do. Well, right? well listen, here's the thing. I mean, you're getting into coaching and all this other stuff. Like, I do coaching, like, for my coaching, like, agents, yeah. I do emails every single day as well. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about for real estate clients when it comes to agents staying yeah. relevant with their clientele, yeah. right? So that's two different things. So like I do emails every single day yeah. to to my to my real estate agents. Yeah, I think you I'm, guys are in agreement. He's yeah, he's cool. talking about like different campaigns working at different times, different mm, cadences. Yeah. yeah. But you, I'm just trying to understand software wise. Like, what software do you use to? Send? I use Constant Contact to send out my email. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Okay, interesting. You don't like constant. Wh which one do we use? Anthony? I just that's not an enterprise level software. Company. No, it's not. Clavio? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it, it literally just sends an email. We use Clavio. Yeah, Clavio is a new one. Uh, Attentive is another. I great don't even one. know which one we use. These enterprise. are like large enterprise level, mm -hmm. but yeah. still affordable. Mailchimp's in the same boat as Constant Contact. It is. It's like the Sherry's Berries of email platforms. Yep. Um, but if it works, it works. If it works, all it I'm works. trying to do is send out an email. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's nothing else I'm trying to do. You don't have like, you don't also fold in SMS marketing or anything like that. Mm, it, Is that like TCP I do it for my real stuff? estate. I do it for my coaching business. Yeah. Right. I SMS is, I mean, you're talking about like you can only monetize eyeballs like 1% of your social following, but with SMS. Because I never open my emails. I don't read emails. So, so like, what's the percentage of emails being open versus text messages? Yeah. A lot higher on text messages. A lot messages. higher. And, you and know this is why I push, like, when I speak to entrepreneurs about their business, the first thing I ask them is, do you have an app? Do you have an app? Mm -hmm. um, and I think, you know, there's, you're, you're speaking very eloquently about a reality that most agents just aren't aware of. They're like, well, I'll go on social media. I'll monetize eyeballs that way. I'll go live on YouTube, live on Instagram, live on TikTok. I'll show them lifestyle photos and videos of. And like, it's great, and they need to be doing that. But but, but as the people come through, yes. they need to collect the data now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Their cell phone, their email, they need to collect that data I, before they lose them in the algorithmic. Well, when I do the lives, and I get people that are interested in something, I'm like, hey, DM me right now your cell phone and email, and then mm -hmm. boom. My, the CRM just just gets collects the data. Nine, not ninety eight percent text messages have an open rate of ninety eight percent. Emails nineteen point eight percent. That's that's pretty dead on. Yeah. Now now you're talking about open rates, right? Yeah. Yeah. Now impressions mean something. Yeah, See, yeah. when somebody hears that, they say, okay, text message over emails, done deal. No 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 no. Ninety eight percent of people mm -hmm. saw the email in their inbox. They didn't, all of them didn't open it. That's an open rate. Yeah, you still stay relevant. So like how many open. eyeballs did you get? See, impressions, see, that's the thing with, with agents are like post about their open house and they're like, oh, I got like, you know, 15 likes or whatever, right? Yeah. No, 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 no. Go into view insights and see that 700 people saw it. Now that means something just because they didn't double tap doesn't mean that they don't see you grinding at that open house. They just didn't double tap on it. People, yeah. but people don't. They they don't. It's like they don't even value the impressions. Like the actual people that saw it. They don't understand. Right. The likes is like the only metric. No, no, no. Saves, same thing. Same shares. thing with with emails. Yeah, right. They, yeah. they, they, you know, people are like, oh well, if somebody isn't opening the email, how long do I let them stay on the list before so, I? So for example, not, not the accounts reached. 2.5 million, but the uh, impressions, 4.7 million. Mm -hmm. What you're saying though, Ricky, is like so spot on. Do you speak on stage about this? Everything. Okay, because the social media component is so important. Listen, I come, from, I come from a background of, like I said, right, junk mail. And then now we're the largest advertiser of business loans on social media, even on Google. 
And I can tell you that it really has to be a mosaic. You were talking earlier in the episode previously about everybody rowing in the same direction. With social media, right, you need to have YouTube, right, long form content, YouTube shorts, TikTok, go live, Instagram, go live. This is all of those things have to be working. Last last 30 days. So So accounts reach 2.5, almost 2.6 million, but the impressions are 4.6. Which means those people saw like two posts or whatever. But that's huge. Two point five. Oh, it's million. massive. Yeah, yeah it's, it's massive. massive. That's a big reach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a big I normally reach. hit a million, a million every thirty days. Yeah. But I think if you're an EXP guy, right, and you have a coaching platform, that's what you're aiming for. Mm. You're aiming to. You're well, if aiming, you have anything, in, in if, you have, pr- if you have any business, even yeah. Cardiff. Well, let's keep yeah. it specific to you guys. Let's yeah. just specific to real estate. If you don't have impressions, then you can't monetize eyeballs. Right, but I, it has I, to I mean, okay. It, it's not directly correlated. I know guys that have three million impressions and don't make shit, and I know people have the smallest followings, and you're like, what the hell? And they're doing a mill a month. Rick Moranis in their, in their is a business. good example. Does he have social media? No, he doesn't do social at all. Right, and now he's into big commercial deals now. This is ten years ago when all that happened. Yeah, I didn't tell you guys the rest of the story. Like he was doing, he did all that like that first month with for sale by owners and stuff, which was like what the, what the hell's going on? He quickly he quickly transitioned into commercial deals, okay. and now does huge commercial deals all over the south. But it still sounds like you need a, a email database. If if I'm a brand new real estate agent, I need social, but most importantly, I need an email. I think you got to do everything. Here's the th- you but do you do need to do everything, but you hard. need but you need to have you need to know why you're doing the thing mm. stuff though. Mm. Like if you're just doing social and you're just like oh whatever comes comes and I don't even know why I'm doing this. Am I attracting buyers sellers? What's the actual goal? That's why I said it's like what is the goal behind it? I need to know that first before you can reverse engineer how what the steps need to be. T- and this is why people need coaches. That's why ninety percent of real estate agents, like you said, fail in the first year. Right? It's kind of like a restaurant. You know what's so funny about that though? The people that are going to lose, you could spend 24 hours a day with them. They're yeah. still going to lose. You think that's true? Damn. I do believe that. And the people that are going to win, you could spend zero time with them. They're still going to win. Mm. I've seen well, it over and over and over again. Can, can you enhance it? Yes. Can you help them get there quicker? Absolutely. Can you take some of the losers and, and a small percentage of them? But I'm telling you. That's not I, use the I, word I loser, think, I think they, have, they have to be coachable and they have to execute. Most people are not and, and you, you had a coach, right? You had Patrick Bay David, and you, you have these other mentors and stuff. Grant Cardone. You, you, yeah. Friend like, I've interviewed all these people. Do you, would you have succeeded without them? I don't think at this level this you, fast. Sure, but, but sure. I, I would have been successful. You would have won. You would have won, yeah, yeah. You won yeah. right? You're going to be a winner regardless. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Can it enhance it? Yes. Absolutely. I, That's why you need coaches and stuff. How about right? you? Did you have a coach? No. Um, when I, I, when I, when I, uh, could I be further along? Yeah, probably. Well, no one's being critical of that. I think what Josh is trying to say, which is like, can you succeed without the coach? Absolutely. Winners are going to win. Winners are going to win. Could, could they win bigger? Yeah. Right. Is the level of success. But this is what goes back to my mom's a hairstylist and owns a hair salon. My dad's a roofer. Right. And one is aspirational. The latter is more conservative, right? The dad. Yeah. Um, and so you have an entrepreneurial mindset already, straight out of the gates at 10 years old, which is what you said to me, right? Yeah. I'm a good listener. Um, Jews, we remember everything, right? Kind of. 1940 yeah. to 1945. A yeah. it's, <laughs> a, it's a fucking thing. Don't um, worry, he knows all It's that. PTSD. <laughs> no, I know all the dates. Um, but in any event, you had the seed planted in you at a very early age. You said winners are gonna win. But I think what the coaching does, and here I am talking about Gold Bar Live, is it Gold Bar Live? Mm. Gold Bar Live, zero to diamond.com, right? Driven and your, your, your coaching platform. Everyone doesn't have to achieve the same scale, mm. right, in life. But there needs to be an aspirational wish something that they want to achieve and they have to be able to identify with that coach whether or not they can ever achieve your level of success is irrelevant but they need someone to kind of paint the picture this is what you can become right it's the future conditional sense and and that and that could that could be somebody they found on youtube it can be but the problem with the coaching that is 
I feel like is not personalized to people's specific profession. Mm -hmm. Right? We're talking about well, re real yeah, estate. You can right find now. that. Yeah. Well, as far as like the inspiration, like, like, yeah. dude, you don't know how many agents were like, I wasn't in real estate. I saw one of your videos and I basically said, if I'm that gonna, guy can do it, I'm gonna I can do it. Yeah, and absolutely. now they make a million bucks a year. I never talked to them. They tell me they tell Rick me this Moranis after they tell me this after the fact, right? Yeah. After it happens, they'll they'll message me and say, Hey, I saw you. It made me want to get in real estate. You made it seem possible. I make a million dollars a year now. Yeah. I followed your stuff step by step. And that's the thing, it's the step by step. So one, there needs to be some aspirational sense that I wanna be this, I wanna do this but the foundational element, right? And this is kind of what you provide and this is what right, I'm understanding about mm -hmm. your platform, which is systems, processes, marketing, like understanding that I'm gonna email on Wednesday. Why? There's no fucking reason. No, there's, and this is the rest of the story, right? Just to sum all that five minute talk up and how to make a million bucks a year. It's the retention of relationships. If there's a process in place where these people never forget me, regardless, I know every single person I talk to is going to remember me three years later when they buy or sell something. And so now the new leads I got year one become warm leads, but now I added new leads on top of that. So now I grew. If I continue prospecting year three, now I have two years of leads that are coming over with me because I have something like email in place, not depending on just social media, right? Because they may forget, they, they could forget about me there. There's a possibility. There's so much room for stuff to fall through the cracks. Yeah. Right. And so now I can like visualize my business growing like this every single year because of the retention of the compounding relationships that build up over time. It's now like, I can go, actually go, visualize getting to a million bucks a year. Go, going back to social media, social media for me, it's not to stay relevant. It's more to get new people. I, so, I, so, absolutely. So that, you, that's the whole point. So you get, get the new, new people, leads. get the data, you boom, get the boom, boom. Yeah. So for example, like, some some videos sometimes go go viral and you have like a million non followers that see it. Yep. So then you collect the data and then that's your data now. And what's cool about that is, is now if you have a product or something you want to sell them, you're on ads against the people that watch the video or follow you or whatever. Yeah. You're, you're building this database where now when you run ads, when you finally come to the day where there's something you want to run ads against. Yeah. Wow. Right. You've collected all this data internally. Yeah, I think, you know. Without that level of coaching. To explain to people that these are the building blocks of building a real business, I think when people think about real estate, they're like, I'll just go out and show a home or I'll you know, find someone yeah. to sell a home for them because they grew up in a, in a W2 environment. Right. They grew up in an environment where they get paid whether there's production or not. They yeah. show up and they get a check. Yeah. Right. And so they get into real estate and they're like, I'll just show homes and I'll get a check. Yeah. But they don't realize that it's an actual fucking business business and that they're yeah. an independent contractor now yeah. and you get paid on production. Right. And that's why there's so much failure. People are so used to W2 life yeah. when they switch to 1099. Right. Right. Then it then it's like they're they they can't they can't get their footing quick enough to get their bills taken care of. Right. To, to continue to be successful. It takes so the transition from W2 to 1099 is such a such I a mean, curve. it's a bumpy road, right? It's it is. A, it's a steep learning curve, but it's so attractive. It's so yeah. attractive when you see the success of certain real estate agents. And that's aspirationally what you want to achieve. Right. I get an email every week and it says, do you want to know what your home is worth? This is the best one. I don't know what software this is. And it's like your home price has increased. I am going to open up that fucking email a hundred times out of a hundred times. If you send me an email in the subject line that says your home's value has increased, I'm opening it. And then I open the email, there's a pixel in the email, it fires, it sends a notification to the agent, they're understanding what their open rates are. Then I'm further clicking the button in the email, the CTA, right, the call to action. It's opening up a website, my browser, they're also pixelizing that. I click the button and it shows me what my home is worth. And the whole while, this is a real estate agent that I've already worked with before. They're monetizing my eyeballs. I might not be in the market to sell, but if you tell me that my home, in my opinion, is overvalued, all right, regardless of the interest rate, I'll consider it, right? And so I think what's missing though in that automation is 
I open up that email every week and then I click the button and then I see my home values increase. Maybe I'm lying. Maybe it's once a month because uh, cadence is important too. But what I don't see with their email automation software is that there's a follow-up. Like I should get an email or a text message that says, hey, bud, real estate's gone up in your area, right? We should talk. I might have a property that's 10 bedrooms, 20 bedrooms, whatever the case may be, right? You're, you keep popping out kids. Let's find you a bigger, right? So th it's that email automation with text automation. You know, everything has to be kind of rowing in the same direction. And that's a fucking business, right? And I yeah. think, you know, if a, if a gal, and this is going to come off misogynistic, but if a gal is selling bottle service at a club, wants to make the transition to real estate agent at 30, right? Probably because she's not hot enough anymore, right? To be, a, you know, selling bottle service. Um, or she's I, got I, kids. I, I've and needs seen to, some hot ones at 30. That's disgusting. I'm out. <laughs> but anyway, but in any event, um, no, it's, it's clickbait for YouTube. It's yeah. fine. But they need to understand that there's that like like Ricky said, there's a transition going from W2 to 1099. But even more than that, if you're actually trying to succeed, foundational elements, right, that are within this business of being a real estate agent that you can't ignore. Yeah. Social, which is something you do. But Ricky's touching upon email, which is a huge component. And he was making fun of me about the direct mail thing because no was it wasn't it's from the 90s but no 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 it wasn't at all oh, okay. i coach right. this oh you do okay direct mail yeah i yeah. think it's valuable i think it's valuable you just have it, it is just for me the, it, unless you're doing these masterful expensive pieces that like jordan cohen does not like postcards right well postcards but like these big ones that are like very high production luxurious unless I you're like doing something like six that postcard. Nine it just kind of depends right um, well, doing I think something I can take I could take Albert's Ferrari right now and get more leads than I would if I did a direct mail campaign. Oh, absolutely. Well, that's yeah. the Beverly yeah. Hills versus yeah. the Beverly Hill Billies, right? Yeah. But I think, you know, it just depends on what your model is. I think for Albert, nice drop in. I think for Albert, right, the Ferrari is going to appeal to certain people. And that's right? why he parks it out front. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You're monetizing those eyeballs. Yeah. But the email can't be ignored. The SMS can't be yeah. ignored. It all plays Junk together. Yeah, right? yeah. Yeah. So so everything that we're talking about, I do and some. Yeah. So I do SMS. I do email. I have a Discord group. Now like, we're talking. Okay. I have so every. I have every little every little thing you can think of. I've got a community on every <laughs> every, every little platform. platform. Yeah. Telegram. Yeah. Discord. Yep. Um, Bumble. Bumble? Rumble. Jesus I'm on Christ. there. I haven't really done much with it yet. It's, 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 it's you recommend it's, this for it's all like a, real it's like estate a YouTube, agents. Um, yeah, you know, it's a newer. Yeah. Is it newer? Okay. Yeah. So all agents should do this. They should establish this. What of, to be on every platform? Yeah. I don't think so because because you, you can't like I've been doing this for 20 years. I did it in stages, mm. right? So like when I started social, I just focused on uh, so Facebook. But if you're a brand for, for a new while, agent, then I did Instagram. Then I I stair stepped it, and now everybody says, "Oh my God, you're everywhere." You know, how do you do all this stuff? Well, like seven years of like slowly stacking something else as soon as I, you know, master this one. It's not like I started posting on all platforms day one. Um, for Instagram and Facebook and do, do you post, do you make your posts, you type them up or how often do you post? I do it um, every day. At, at like least once every, a day? At least. Yeah. Yeah. But you, you post it yourself and you mm -hmm. type it up? Yeah. That's wild. He has bought yep, himself I answer a all job. the DMs. I do all the stuff. Yeah. If it, you're going to get to a point, or maybe you already have, you just won't acknowledge it. Well, when it doesn't work mathematically, if I can't get to all the DMs and stuff mathematically, that's what it how, is. How many platforms do you post on daily? All of them. Like how, how oh many? Oh my god! So many. okay. I mean, you got Instagram, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Facebook, email, Twitter, Discord, TikTok. Um, TikTok. the text message, TikTok. Oh my god, that's so much work. Um, LinkedIn, LinkedIn. I'm having a YouTube? panic attack. YouTube, YouTube too. That's do you lot. do long form YouTube? Where yeah, because you, you have a podcast. Yeah, yeah. And then who clips up your do YouTube? I do. You're a machine. All right, we got to. So talk. I go through all the. I go through all the. Uh, I go through the videos and I'll pick the clips I want to make. Okay, and you'll the, hand it over to someone. Hand it over. Say, yeah. These are the timestamps. Make the clips. Right. No cheesy overlays. Right. Dollar signs with like dollars following. Right. Well, we we're still testing stuff. Like the algorithm is so like all over the place. 
Yeah, I right? mean, right. So like stuff like enough. that, where like was was cranking like a year ago. Right. And now it's not working as good. And so I'm like, so when when I do video, like <clears throat> when I do videos where I just like talk and it's like a sixty, it took me sixty seconds to like film it and post it and everything. Yeah. yeah. Those crush more than anything. Authentic. Right. Authentic. Um, let, let me show you something really quick. Can you put that up? Put that up, uh, please, Anthony. So my team. They 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 are the ones that cut clips and clip them together. Yeah. So for example, that that one that one is at what 1.7 million views, 1.6 something. That one got 41,000 shares, 3,000 almost 4,000 comments, and um, you see 1.6 million non followers saw that clip. Mm -hmm. That cl that that post that my team put together with the cover, the muse, the trending song, and all that got me about 20,000 new followers. Yeah. Can I can I see what that clip looks like? Is there any way to see yeah. it? That sounds way easier than uh, open house. Getting yeah, eyeballs. It's weird. You know, I love, I think we're in an age, uh, Ricky, you know, because like you said, right, the algorithm is a living, breathing, it's an ocean, right? And it's ever moving. And I think you can't just stick to one style. You always have to reinvent. Always have to reinvent. But I think the one thing that's really hitting well with people right now, especially for the real estate content that I see, because it used to be, and Josh and I would always joke about this, it was a picture of a husband and wife, two kids and a dog, and they're holding up a sold sign, and it looks like they sold the children. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. it was the most awkward bullshit you would ever see real estate agents post, but they had no cre or they had no creativity, or at least they didn't want to employ it. What I see working right now is the authenticity. Mm. I want to see a video of a real estate agent inside of an open house with nobody there. I want to see that. I want to understand what it feels like. I want to understand what they did and what they should have done. And I want them to talk about that. And I would watch a video about and that. that. And that's what agents are scared. They're scared to, to show that side. Right. Mm -hmm. you know, but I think scared. that's where we're at. Remember, I don't know, how are you like almost 40? Yeah, 42. You're 42? Okay. So we're all roughly the same age, although you said I was doing something in the 90s but it's fine um i was doing stuff in the 90s yeah i was in middle school high school <laughs> Fuck. i was painting I, I was painting homes he was laying a roof he was saying i was junk mailing people in the 90s or something <laughs> with ray dalio or something um it's fucking bullshit okay in any event but i think um the authenticity component is important and i think my point that i was going to say which is it was the flashiness this is my rented Bentley in front of the home that I'm listing for sale. And I'm going to wet the driveway with the hose with some nice lighting at like the blue hour or something. But now I feel like it's more of, do you remember the 1990s like MTV? Um, cribs? Not Cribs, because that was bullshit. That was all lies. But when they pivoted to the real world, do you remember the real world? Mm. The real world was like the whole premise of the show is like what happens when you put these people yeah. and they stop acting polite and they start acting mm. real. Yeah. I think we finally come full circle with these real estate agents mm. where it's like we don't need to see the Bentley. We don't need to see the bullshit. Show us the authenticity. Yeah. And I think that's how they'll monetize the eyeballs. This is my advice, but what the fuck does it mean? But I feel like this is what I'm seeing as the most pervasive. I think the algorithm likes it. Yeah. What if, you, what if you're authentic, but you still have a Bentley? Listen, some people like asking you. for a friend. <laughs> <laughs> asking for a friend. <laughs> well, I think it's different. You know why? Because you have a real. Listen, LDS people are definitely a close second. Yeah. Yeah, Mormons. Um, shout out to all my Mormon homies. But I think the, the truth of the matter is you have a sector, right? You have a vertical that um, I think subscribes to this aspirational content mm -hmm. where they see it and they want to yeah. identify with that. Yeah. I think with, with, with Ricky, as an example, um, you know, you've got, he's a, you know, you're a good old boy, right? You're from the South and 
you have conservative what, what seems to be right like a conservative upbringing and um you're not flashy and i think for a lot of people that aren't raised in that you know sort of this environment where mm -hmm. you know uh ferraris are um sort of what's on their mind right people can identify with your story mm. right so there's something for everybody mm -hmm. right um but again without the without the aspirational content nobody's going to subscribe nobody's going to follow nobody's going to comment right. nobody's going to share so it's like you know ricky's got to say that i at you know in middle school and high school i was putting shingles on a roof with my dad yeah and then he's got to say but look where i am now are you happy with what you're doing because if you're not, I can coach you, right, into being one of the most successful real estate agents in name your state. And I think that's what the EXP model probably provides for, which is you don't have to have this brick and mortar, right? You can recruit people, like you said, worldwide. Um, that it works, you know, social media is doing what it, it does and everybody's gonna leverage it how they leverage it. Well, I think for Ricky, what helped him a lot is that he also, he built a powerful brand. Cause that helps Like with a everything. personal brand? Personal brand, yeah. yeah. Because yeah. then that helps him. He has more reach. So now you send emails. People recognize your face. Mm -hmm. People recognize your style. Yeah. And it makes it easier to recruit people. I think without... Somebody told me this interesting story. Oh, this is Dan Fleischman again. He said, can you name the CEO of United Airlines? Can you name the CEO of Southwest Airlines? CEO of JetBlue? American. Who's... Who? Aeromexico. <laughs> Aeromexico. Um, um, what about that other one? The, the Virgin. Exactly. You know him. Sir Richard Branson. Yeah. Why do you know Sir, Sir Richard Branson? And I put the Sir just to be polite. He mm -hmm. is knighted after all. He built a personal brand. Right. He built a personal brand once you knew him and, and all of his antics, because they are antics, but that's the personal brand yeah, component, yeah. right? Well, the richest, the richest man on earth, well, uh, on publicly, he bought a, a um, social media platform. Mm -hmm. Sir Richard Branson did. Yeah, absolutely. Well, but you're, well, talking, but you're about, talking about Elon. Elon just yeah. bought Twitter. He went all the way. Yeah. He but did. I think you have to have a personal brand. You have to have... Elon is very relatable because... Yeah, okay. He's very relatable because he's kind of a dork, but he also wants to act cool. <laughs> right? Sir Richard Branson, though, right? He's cool. He's cool. He's super cool, right? So in the any event, I think we can kind of close up with this final thought, which is... Concentrate on building your personal brand. Mm. Trying to build a corporate brand, right? If you want a real estate company in Tallahassee mm -hmm. and you're like, it's called, you know, Ricky whatever. Realty. Yeah, whatever, right? Trying to build that, no one's going to go to that page. If I go to Red Bull's Instagram page mm -hmm. right now, mm -hmm. there is nothing about Red Bull. It is mm -hmm. everything about extreme sports. Yeah. That's how they're monetizing the eyeballs, yeah. right? Red Bull smart. Yeah. So if I'm going to Ricky's Instagram or if I'm going to your Instagram, I want to know what your life's about. And, and like ESPN and some of these others, right? They're, it's, yeah. it's, yes. They're, yes. they're doing such a good job yeah. of the content. Um, they're getting attention. ESPN's content is like, you know, some gal in the, you know, in high school dunking on someone. Barstool. Yeah, or Barstool is another great example. Quick question before we wrap up. So I want to get your opinions on, on, um, on Zillow. Mm -hmm. So like Zillow... Zillow, I believe, is the biggest real estate company right now, right? Well, they're more of a marketing yeah, company. Yeah, they're, right? you know, they've got the most Tech. eyeballs, let's yeah. just say. And because they have the data, right? Yeah. Yep. Anybody can Zillow. have the data. It's from MLS. Yeah, but, but Zillow, if you look them up, their market cap is It's like just their market billion. cap. Yeah, they, market they've cap. got, they're the biggest. So, so what's going to happen with real estate? Because I know we have EXP, real caps, downlines, all that stuff. What about these companies like Zillow? Can they put the realtors out of business? No. They'll have to hire them if they did that. I mean, you're still going to have to have somebody doing the job. Um, what if they just get a better deal there by just clicking the... Well, then it comes down to service. Like, if you look at the companies that try to do that, like um, discount type services, they don't have a lot of good reviews, right? People have a bad experience. And then it all comes back to traditional agents. Um, I'll give you my opinion. Could, th could things get squeezed? Oh yeah, like uh, you know, down in Australia and stuff. Like they do like one two percent, um, no buyer agent involved. But that those agents would well, just well, end up paying yeah, Zillow to but, be on the but platform. But what if what they, if they don't want to? What if AI? You know, it's getting better and better and, and and more intelligent. What if AI guarantees you that you're gonna get the best price, best deal? Just click right here, no commissions. 
I love it. Yeah. I'm all in. So. Yeah. I mean, we'll we'll see. I still think you're going to want somebody overseeing that. Um, you, you, you know what, what, what what's not going to disappear? What we talked about earlier. If you build your personal brand, yeah, AI that, yeah. can't take AI over, can't take over that. Right, right. You can you can you can pivot if you have a brand, but um, yeah, like if 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 that happens in real estate, it's going to happen in every industry. Here, right. here, here's my like. I'm not clairvoyant, Claire Huxtable. You know, if anybody can identify with the Cosby Show, I'm not clairvoyant. I can't see the future, but I I, I feel like there is going to be a model that's going to be tested eventually. And maybe Zillow will do it. Maybe Redfin will do it. Maybe I'll try to build a software company to do They've it. They've been trying to do I it I think forever. Zillow Zillow's going to crack that. Well, I didn't even tell you what my idea is. It's a very good maybe idea. Maybe we could jump ahead of them. Yeah. The idea is you post your home for sale, you have a reserve bid, and you just let people bid it up. And whoever wins, wins. And that's how the house gets sold. Now, there may still be agents, right, involved in a transaction, but I like to let the market dictate, right? And in an algorithmic world where you have social media that can reach far and wide, yeah. if I'm selling my home in the Hamptons, right? And there's a guy in Laguna Beach or a gal, I don't wanna to be too misogynistic. There's a guy, anyway, he's in Laguna Beach and he wants to buy my house in the Hamptons. He's gonna to go to the website, he's gonna or open the app, he's gonna see the home and, and listen, you can sponsor the ad, right? You can pay more to be at the top, kind of like auto trader, right? That type of thing. And he's going to bid, right? And who knows? Maybe you go live and there's a question to answer, right? Something like that. Maybe there's a walkthrough, virtual walkthrough. Um, you can, you know. Showing windows and stuff like absolutely, that. Absolutely, like, yeah. right? I see a future of that. I don't, you know. It'll be interesting. Um, I think the up to this point, I think the problem has been profitability. Mm. You know, the discount brokers have all lost money. Yeah. Um, and they hadn't been able to crack that code of being pro a profitable company, yeah. doing, representing buyers and sellers, um, you know, at a discount rate. That that, that code hasn't been cracked. Could, could it be in the future? Sure. But, but, but most agents, though, are not the smartest. No, and, and AI is the smartest. You can say it. You can, you can say it. it. Well, can the thing it. about they're mostly women. I'm just kidding. I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. Good God, you can well, smile. Well, it's a joke. It's my, my joke. Like e even even people. I'm just gonna keep it like that. People, they don't safe. know how to. They Real don't safe. know how to type a paragraph. Or they, they don't know how to reply to people. They don't know how to type up a condition. Uh, chat GPT. Don't chat GPT help. it because yeah. Chat GPT is smarter. Yeah. Well, they're and, smarter than us too. Yeah. 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 So so if. AI is going to guarantee me that I'm going to get the best price for this house, and I just click a button. What's and they it, get what's it, like it this. guaranteeing it on though? It, it's historical the data. AI. I think the AI historical data. Yeah. Well, right? that's how what algorithms work today. Data. Yeah. That's how algorithms work today. If if algorithms can become sentient, right? Then it's not based off of historical data. Yeah. Right. There. There's. You you know there's AI underwriters now for yeah. banks. What do you mean there's AI at our company? So there's yeah, but there's a bank. They don't they, they don't care about the income, the credit. Like even if you don't qualify based on the quali the the ratios, debt ratios. This is in America. A AI yes, AI approves the loan. Interesting. And and they get you your they give you your options. Bam bam bam. You fund and record and close in like five days or less. There's a bank that that we have that does that. Interesting. So I think I've heard about that. So going back to your your question, what do you what do you see? What like do I you see? think Zillow is going to come out with something yeah, that, that yeah. gets rid yeah. of agents? Just, just like EXP and Real came up, came out with like an innovative campaign. Yeah. I think AI is going to is is going to eventually. I don't know when. So you think agents could be in the same boat as travel agents? That's what the Wall Street Journal article Wall Street Journal article said today. Travel agents, um, you know, all of these like used to be jobs are now replaced, right? Mm -hmm. So is the, you know, again, this is not my opinion, this is what the Wall Street yeah. Journal said, but the lifetime value or the foreseeable value of a real estate agent diminishes, right, over time. Yeah. Just like what they can do, what they can affect. Well, R R Ricky, you're gonna be fine because you have your personal brand. Well, yeah, I'll be and, fine. And, and, other, and other agents that build a personal brand are gonna be fine. Is it gonna affect and you're gonna have to pivot 100%? And mm -hmm. I think like, I don't know if, 
in the next five years, 10 years? I don't know how close we are to that. M maybe you know better. I mean, we employ a lot of AI in what we do, right? So um, there was a time where we had, uh, you know, what we do is business finance. So we underwrite business loans mm. uh, and fund them. Um, there was a time where people were looking at certain KPIs of a business uh, and trying to fit it into a matrix to understand if it like fit their right, like credit box. That doesn't happen anymore, right? As people are going through an application, we're already qualifying someone. So you've taken yeah. the role of an underwriter yeah. out of the equation, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and automated you know, underwriting for a business loan. Right. I think if you can do that, you could probably do that for a real estate agent. Are we there yet? No. How, how, how many years from there? Five? I, I think, I don't think it goes away. I think the real estate agent just takes on a different type of responsibility. I think, I think that like some of the agents are going to be, they're going to be very limited in the income they can make because they're going to do simple stuff. Because. That's kind of what I was getting at. You know, down in Australia, they, it's like a 1% commission. There's no buyer agent commission in that. It's like yeah. one, 2%, whatever. Right. You know, with the commission lawsuits is happening um, and the advancements in technology, I, I, I truly think that's a place that we could end up, you know, where it's like a 1% fee, right, for the whole thing. Um, I think that, that that's a, a reality at some point. How long, I don't know, but I think that's the direction we're going in. I don't think anyone foresaw Redfin and Zillow. I think that popped out of right. nowhere and disrupted the market. And when things like that happen, right, kind of like Uber, it's another example, right? Um, it doesn't necessarily displace people. They just have to find a new role. What do you, where do you think Patrick Bedavid's Minek goes? Have you heard about that? Mm -hmm. So, you know lawyers they don't charge by the minute so expensive lawyers let's say they charge one thousand dollars an hour and i think you, our attorneys and you, charge and, and, in 15 minute increments okay so so if you call them for 40 seconds they charge you 15 minutes mm -hmm. yeah okay great that's the so, unit of measure so patrick created this app minect where you could pay by the minute so at andrew tate's right there you got patrick and you got he has a lot of celebrities lawyers and you can access people. them so you you could access them facetime text them call them and you get charged by the minute so it's like an uber app where you just click boom yeah. and you schedule it and done so this and it's an app yeah there's how, there's, how, a, there's another one out do there. you do you feel well do you feel like this app can become like can just take off and be like an uber or something like that because now you have access to anybody and you pay by the minute. I've seen these platforms. They're, they're, one of them was just started by the guy who started Zillow. Where you could charge people by the minute? How, mu how much is it to talk to uh, this Andrew one, this one isn't, Patrick by David? Um, I'll tell you right now. Misogynistic people can't charge that much, I would imagine. I'm sure it's like 100 bucks a minute. Yeah, maybe 100 bucks a minute <clears throat> or something. No, well, I'll, t I'll tell you right now. Minect, so watch. This is like a commercial for Minect. Yeah, Wow. he's sponsored. Well, I'm asking you your opinion. So you could book, see Patrick but David, you could message him starting at $100, or you could book a call 15 minutes is 9,000 bucks. Jeez. I, honestly, <laughs> I could minutes. see a future. If what, if what you're getting at is something that I'm sort of tracking, I would pay to talk to an experienced real estate agent in my area. Is that, is that where you're going with this? Like a like a app where you I love just, it. Like, just charging I love it. to get some advice on the yeah. contract. I like love that. it. I'd yeah. love it. I'd say this is the zip code that I want to be in. I don't want to meet you. I don't want to go to your brick and mortar office. I don't want to drive in your car. I don't want to see a bunch of listings. Yeah. I want five hundred dollars for thirty minutes of your time. This is what I'm looking for. Find it for me. Because for me, like, if I want business advice, yeah, I'm I'm gonna skip everything. And I'm just gonna like call you for yeah. 15 minutes, or I'm gonna call Neil Patel for 15 minutes, or whoever I need. Right. Like if I'm buying a house um, in Alabama, I, I don't I don't care about one percent commission. I'm gonna call Ricky, and I'm gonna be like, Hey, Ricky, I want to talk to you. I don't want to talk to like your assistant or any other agent, yeah. and I don't want to do AI. I'll pay you your full commission. I want to work with you because I know he's the best, and 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 because he's known, it opens so many doors. Yeah. But that's the way I see it. I I want I want to get it from the best. I can see a future for real estate agents where, where that is a real thing. But in any event, I think that there's truth to it, right? And I'm tracking what you're saying. Yeah. I would pay 500 bucks to talk to a real estate agent mm. if they were of your caliber. Yeah. 
because I don't, you know, you wouldn't waste my time. I'd book it in advance. There'd be a bunch of questions, right? Like a form I have to go through. What's the area you're looking for? How many bedrooms? Yeah. View. What direction do you want your house? You know, Indian people, for example, they got to have the house facing north. I can say that Cause, legally. Because I don't, I don't want to talk to anybody in, in Ricky's downline. I want to be like, hey, Ricky, I'll pay you five grand for an hour. Let's just let's What would talk. that cost if I want to talk to you for an hour? Mm. Or not an hour, 15 minutes. I don't know. I'd have to think about it. Okay. Like, what's the model? What, what's the supply and demand? How many people are trying to talk to me? Um, 500 bucks. You know. I'll give Shit. you. I'll give, I'll give you two thousand at least. Yeah, something like They're that. Driving it up. Something I'll like, give it to you guys for a dollar, like right? That, right? <laughs> a thousand bucks. Listen, I'm Jewish. I'll broker the deal. Well, you got to think, man. Fifteen, 10%. fifteen minutes. I mean, there's a lot of value in there. I mean, like, I mean. Well, but you know, you're not even an agent anymore to that extent, right? You're not like a a listing agent. You know, you're not doing stuff like that. I just mean like an agent. I still of your... advise people on stuff. All right. Yeah. Fine. I, you're for I sale. Still, I get I still, it. I still advise right. people on stuff. Well, let's do it. I could call Josh it's, Altman right now. It's not that hard. Josh Altman? Yeah, I like that guy. You're going to be speaking with Josh mm -hmm. Altman in two weeks. Yeah. 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 You're going to yeah. really call him? Goldbarlive.com. Mm -hmm. Go there. Get your tickets. Yeah. Tickets still yep. available in Times Square where the Heisman Trophy is Worthen. presented. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Josh Altman. Paddle um, Paddleham Theater. Paddleham Theater. Mm -hmm. You're going to call Josh Altman? No. After. After. We got to go. Call him after. Okay. We'll wrap, wrap this up. Dude. Such a pleasure to meet you. Oh, you too, man. Seriously, yeah. man. I appreciate Thank you guys. Come on anytime when you're in LA. Yeah. Thank you. Cool. That's a wrap, guys. We'll see you next time. Later.